Hey, welcome to another video. I decided to come out with my infrared camera. The uh, got a converted Nikon Z50. And I've got a 35 millimeter lens on it, the 1.8 S lens, which I guess uh, I think it equates to like 52 millimeter, something to that effect on a crop sensor. But I've been out here a couple of times because it's got some nice trees and it's got a bridge if you've seen some of my other videos you might notice the bridge I've taken a few shots of it but there's a lot of interesting trees here in a previous video I mentioned how I didn't really like cloudy days for infrared but I've kind of changed my mind on that I can't say that I prefer it but the cloudy days don't really bother me for doing infrared I think because the original reason I bought this camera was to do high contrast black and white and with cloudy days it's hard to do that with infrared camera but you do get some interesting images this park has a nice walking trail and it also I think it's it's called the heart trail you have a lot of places where you can stop and do different exercises so it's a pretty popular place to walk if anybody lives in the south florida area palm beach county it's john prince park outside of lake worth there's images in here you just really have to go and look for them there's the bridge that i've photographed many times with my infrared camera If you get a nice sky, it makes for a nice image. I don't know how well you can see. I can see a little bit better. A couple of pelicans sitting up in the tree. I think someone like Simon Baxter would probably come to this park and put me to shame with all these trees, which is okay. I mean, it's his thing to do woodlands. He's excellent at it if you haven't seen his channel look up Simon Baxter if you're into photographing trees and Adam Gibbs as well he's another one who's good at this type of thing one of the things I wanted to discuss was the topic of does YouTube really help or hurt photographers you can get some good advice on here you can get some bad advice so like anything else you have to be careful as to what you listen to I'm not saying you have to listen to me by any means I'm just saying that there's a lot of varieties of opinions on here yeah Simon would go crazy with this tree here in front of me but in my opinion I think overall <clears throat> if you have one if you have some sense of what you're looking for and what it is you're trying to learn YouTube can be very good for photographers for a lot of things I mean you can look up just about any topic and probably get a decent answer as to what you're trying to do photography is no different I mentioned in a previous video that one of the reasons why I got back into infrared a little bit was because I was watching a video from Thomas Heaton and he was out shooting infrared and it kind of piqued my interest so in that regard I'd say YouTube helped me a little bit gave me another avenue of expression in my photography that I've been enjoying it's something I decided I wanted to share with you some of these videos you see what I mean? You have all these different areas where you can stop and do a different exercise. 
So it's a pretty popular path. You notice I didn't say I stop and do it. I just showed you the picture of how other people can stop and do it. One of the problems of coming out to a busy park is I just had some woman all upset with me. She thought I was filming her walking, screaming at me to stop. Ah, what are you gonna do? And you thought being a YouTube person was all fun and games. <laughs> Welcome to South Florida. In the half hour I've been out here, it went from chilly and cloudy to all of a sudden, the sky just opened up. It's nice and blue all of a sudden. A little bit of cloud, but hey, now you shift your priorities as to how you want to visualize your images. So now you're going to have shadows instead of that kind of flat sky that gives you an even light. Now you have a totally different type of light. So you have to adjust how you want to photograph. I think that's one thing that helps you become a better photographer. And that is, you know, you always hear about athletes golfers in particular where they talk about visualizing their shot before they take it. I think photographers can do the same thing. I know a lot of times when I go out and photograph because I do a lot of black and white even if the screen is color I see it in black and white while I'm taking the image. In my mind I'm visualizing black and white. I'm not as good as visualizing in infrared yet especially with these trees. But uh, I think it's an exercise that's, that's good for you to try. And that is to visualize what it is you want the end product to be. After you process it, what is it you want it to look like? And you might set your exposure differently because of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little walk through the woods. Well, I can't say woods, through the park, through the clutter of trees. Still going to try and find a couple different images I can pick out here. Hopefully I can post a, th a few of them for you. And until next time, if you enjoyed this at all, please like and subscribe. If you want to submit one of your own images to the upcoming photo of the month videos would be more than happy to have you so please do until next time take good care of yourself